like nothing at all. I think we can do more. I thought it would be interesting to reflect a bit about how far we've come and revisit one of the projects that really started it all. I'm perforated square tubing for the exoskeleton. Six feet of it. Okay, so I admit this is a really ghetto testing setup, but I really want to see this thing go. And I got some of the pneumatic fittings I'll be needing for the exoskeleton. Some quarter inch polyline, quick connect fittings for the cylinders, uh, larger quick connects for the uh, main valve bank, flow control valves, more flow control valves, meter in, meter out, and a bunch of T's just in case. And here's my box of cylinders. Pressure regulator. Start trying this out. Okay, so these guys are called flow control valves and they allow me to adjust the speed that the cylinder actuates at. So right now, they're both fully open, and it's fairly easy to move the cylinder back and forth. Now if I tighten this one, it becomes much harder. This is restricting the flow, and almost impossible if I keep going. So this is important because if I'm running the exoskeleton at full pressure, it's going to actuate really fast, which could kind of be dangerous. All right. So this is one of my car batteries from the electric doom buggy, and it weighs about 60 pounds. So let's see how uh, this cylinder can pick it up. This is gonna be awkward. Oh yeah, no problem. All right, let's try this again at full pressure. Wow, so much power. Alrighty. So if I put another guy on the front, I think we'll have some. Oh, oh. Think I'll pick up the battery now? Safety first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think we're making some really good progress with this. Just a quick little concept to show it. And then what I'm hoping to do is add some cylinders off the back of the chest. For now, I'm just going to steal this webbing and the backpack straps. The one mounted off the shoulder with a bolt will allow the entire arm to rotate up and down like this, whereas the other one will let it rotate around. I'd like to introduce you to my mannequin named Tony. He is actually quite similar to my size, which is perfect because this means that I can actually put the exoskeleton on him so I can do the measurements, because otherwise it's going to be pretty hard to make the exoskeleton fit when I'm the one who's supposed to be wearing it. That's better. But I got the shoulder mounted. It's actually surprisingly flexible. But uh, we're almost getting ready to uh, throw them together. So there's the shoulder joint, and then this is going to attach on to the frame. I just have to make some straps to actually hold to my arm, so I'll have like a spacer with some padding, especially on the, uh, the bicep. I'll keep everything in place. But I'm pretty excited. I think this is gonna work out quite well. So you might have noticed I'm kinda mixing universes here, Iron Man, Elysium. Well, an Iron Man suits the end goal someday, so you know, might as well start early. Alright, so that's about 170 pounds or just under 80 kilograms. Definitely something I can't curl myself. But might as well try. <sighs> Start with is a more lightweight exoskeleton. It's 
going to be kind of more like the Elysium exoskeleton crossed with the exoskeleton you see in Call of Duty. I'm going to focus on making the exoskeleton kind of like a, a modular design. It's going to be a lot more lightweight. We're going to utilize the pneumatic muscles as well as some cylinders for more of the, uh, the strength aspects. But what I really like about this is it's actually going to have a real exoskeleton. It's going to have locking limbs and joints, which means hypothetically you can go into a position and you can hold a really heavy weight without any of that weight being transmitted to your own body. So some of the first stuff we're going to start with is we're going to make a modular air pack. So that's going to make use of the air tank I got and the 12 volt air compressor. Alright, so we've installed a pressure regulator for the leg cylinders and we finished off most of the electronics now. We have two main power switches. One's for 12 volts, which is the buck boost converter, which is hidden behind here, and the other's the main power for the battery pack. So we turn that on. The compressor turns on, and if we turn this one on, the fans spin up. So as you guys know, I've been using pneumatics for pretty much everything up to this point, and that's because they're cheap, they're easy to use, and they're pretty powerful. I've been working on a little system to use pressure regulation between the two sides of the cylinder in order to give it a rough positional control. Finally, we have mechanical advantage. You know how a bicycle works? It uses gears to increase your power output by mechanical advantage. If you could create an exoskeleton to do what the bicycle did for modern transportation, you're set. I'm actually planning a hybrid of the two designs, pneumatic and mechanical advantage. The lower half of the ex exoskeleton is going to be using mechanical advantage, which will allow the legs to remain flexible so you can still run around, but be able to lock in place so you can take heavy loads without affecting your body. And the upper body will use pneumatics to allow you to have lots and lots of strength. And that's about it. So where is it now? Well, besides showing it to fans at various conventions and events, it's mostly sat on a shelf. In the original test, I used cinder blocks that weighed approximately 171 and a half pounds or about 77 kilograms. But a lot of people seem to think it was fake weights. So let's prove it once and for all and use real Olympic weights. Since this is just an upper body exoskeleton, my very human legs still have to hold the weight. So I'm wearing a weightlifting belt and I got some gloves on to hopefully protect myself. Okay. Like nothing at all. I think we can do more. I think the world record's 249 and a half pounds held by Dennis Saplinski. Two hundred and fifty five pounds, more than the world record. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, that is heavy. All right. Again. World record. That was pretty good, but let's smash the world record. Let's do 275 pounds. Just gonna do one rep this time. That's freaking sweet. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe here, ring the bell to be notified when we launch a new video, and be sure to let us know what you think by leaving a comment below. And if you wanna catch our latest content as soon as it's available, head on over to our main English YouTube channel and subscribe there as well. On that channel, you can listen to a bunch of different languages by clicking the gear icon below the video to change the audio track to your preferred language. We'll see you next time.